guys, this is Kazi. Welcome to such an epic and most anticipated series, grading your footage. If you want me to pick your footage to grade, then here's the criteria that you need to follow. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Instagram, DM me on Instagram with the subject line grading your footage with the link to your clip that should be available on Google Drive or Dropbox and a screen grab so I can see what your footage looks like. Then I'm going to need in writing from you. You have permission to use this footage for your paid or free tutorials. So now you know the rules are pretty simple. Drop a comment below if you have any questions. The point of this series is very simple. I want to give you permission to push your images. If you're not a professional colorist, then you you don't know how far you can take your image. Whether you're working with the 8-bit Sony S-Log footage or Alexa Mini, I've seen people just touch their images and then they're too scared to like really go further than that. When we watch movies and when we watch TV commercials that we love, trust me, they're pushing their image to the max. They're keeping it right at the sweet spot. That's what you're going to be discovering here. We don't have a formula. It's not going to be popular film looks or anything like that. Here, it's going to be case to case basis. OK, I'm going to be taking a shot depending on where it fits in the narrative. We're going to create a look based on that. Here's the shot that we're going to be using in our episode one. It came from Jake. His Instagram handle is right here. Go check out his page. Give him a follow. If you're a filmmaker, he's putting out bangers every single day. So how do we feel when we look at Jake's shot? Let me tell you how I feel. To me, it's a cold winter day in Chicago, and I'm going to build my grade around that. So every single thing that you're going to see here is going to be supporting that narrative. Are you guys pumped? Are you guys ready? And for those that want to level up their color grading game, check out the link in the description. One hour long training where I'm going to show you how to get the perfect skin tones out of your Sony S-Log 8-bit footage, how to get the clean white look. It's the go to commercial look. How to get the creamy film look, how to fix the dreaded gamma shift and much, much more. Link is in the description. And guys, if you're enjoying the content on this channel, smash that like button, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness. Follow me on Instagram. You know, I'm dropping value bombs there every single day. Let's roll the intro. All right, so this time we're creating a really fun look. So let's just dive right in and uh, check out this clip first. One thing right away that I can tell is shot really well, well exposed, white balance is right on the money. So we're not going to be uh, doing too much to get it in the ballpark. So that's really good. Now I'm just going to go ahead and select my hero frame. So something like that. I mean, this is looking, this is looking good. So I'm going to park it here. First node, let's just reserve it for noise reduction. Then I'm going to create a second node, and this is where we're going to do our exposure. And then let's create another one, and this is where we're going to do our saturation. And the look is going to be created right here. And uh, let's just line them up how I usually do. So this is going to come down right here, and then look is going to go up like that. And then I'm going to create a layer mixer this time. We're going to be creating a really interesting look. This is going to be his skin. This is going to be our look adjustment. This is going to be our vignette. So we're keeping the rest pretty traditional to what we usually do. This is going to be our global adjustment. Sharpening grain. Finishing nodes. Let's just keep them separate. Let's just get going. So I'm going to go pretty heavy on the contrast in the beginning. And uh, that's what we're going to start off with. Because this is anytime you're creating a sports look, like you can just really go places, you know, just have fun with it. So I'm going to push it somewhere around here. And then I'm going to bring my gain down quite a bit to just like really let this image breathe. And then I'm going to raise my gamma up to somewhere around here. I'm going to raise my saturation up somewhere around here. This is it. This is looking pretty natural. So, so far, so good. Let's move into our look node. First thing that I want you to do is right click here, go under composite mode. And usually this technique is used for bleach bypass, but we're not going to be necessarily doing that. So, and this is really heavy handed, right? Like look how much everything is pushed. So I'm going to find like a happy medium by clicking on soft light. So this gives us somewhat of a happy medium, but still not where we want to be. It's still very much pushed. So first thing that I'm going to do is take my contrast and pull back a little bit, like not too much, just a tiny bit, even something like that. 
And then another thing that I want to do is I want to take my saturation and just kill it all the way. Boom. Like just gone. And uh, just bear with me. We're going to create a really cool look. Now I'm going to go under my skin. And that's where I'm going to just grab his skin. And uh, then that's where the look is going to come from. So let's go ahead. Click right here. Qualifier. Grab this much. I'm going to hit Shift H to see what we're grabbing. And let's open this up. And uh, this is pretty good. And now what we want to do is, let's see, I'm going to open this up. So we don't necessarily grab his eyes at all. Something like this. And then I'm going to raise this up a little bit to grab his ears. And then blur it out quite a bit, okay? Like I'm keeping it somewhere around here. Like really just push it. And now this is looking really, really clean. So that's our key, and it's going to hold up. So I'm going to park it on our hero frame. And if I do before and after, you can see that we pull the skin very nicely. Okay. So we got the detail back, even in his hair and everything. So now what I want to do is a uh, couple of things. First of all, let's start giving it some juice in here. Okay. So I'm going to go into my offset. I'm going to take my offset and just start moving it towards like this warm color. Like we're really going for a nice, interesting look. I'm going to go into my gamma and do the same. I'm going to start raising it up to like warm it up a little bit, not too much. So even something like that, I'm actually going to take my offset and move it towards red too, and then take my gamma and do the same somewhere around here. This is looking pretty good. Another thing that I want to do here is clean it up. So once you create this effect that we did in our layer mixer, it dirties up the skin quite a bit. And to counter that, I'm going to go under my mid-tone. I'm going to pull it back to open it up. And just like really, see, soften everything up. So if I do this is before and then this is after. So you can see it opens it up quite a bit. This is looking really nice. Okay. One more thing here. I'm going to go in my RGB curves and I'm going to take it from here and lift it up a little bit. Not too much. That's it. Just that much. Okay. Now what we want to do is I'm going to go in my look node and I'm going to split the difference. Obviously, we just don't want it pure black and white. I mean, this just does not look cool. So I'm going to go in here in my key settings and I'm going to split the difference. So I'm going to start dialing it back so we can get some color back into our shot. And I'm going to park it somewhere around here. Okay. Now, obviously, we see that our dude is just like there's way too much color on him and that's okay. We can control it in a little bit, right? Or we can even go in here and I can go into my saturation and just dial it back a little bit. Something like that. That's looking fine. And now what I want to do is under my look adjustment, I want to pop them out. Okay. Because we got, we still got tons of room to play with, right? So what I want to do is I want to go in here. I'm going to click on my editable splines. I'm going to click right here and just a little bit, like just pop them. So now what I want to do is just grab this and pull it down just a little bit, like not too much. I don't want it to be too contrasty. But I mean, that does the trick. It looks really nice. Gives it a lot of pop. Okay. Now in this node, that's where the magic is going to happen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell this node to, hey, take information from the skin node. And then let's go in here and invert it. So I want to make changes to everything that's outside of that skin that we selected. And now here, what I want to do is I want to go in here, break the chain, go into my red channel, pull it down. That's what's going to give us that Chicago cold that we're going after. So just watch. Okay. First thing that I'm going to do, actually, let me reset that. And then I want to uncheck editable splines. And now if I go in and pull it down, just look. It's really giving us that look that we're going for. And another thing that's really cool is that it's also selecting his eyes and it's giving him that Viking look. I don't like how this gets so teal. So if we want to get some of that color back, it's really easy. I'm going to go into my log wheels and I'm just going to counter it. I'm going to balance it out. So I'm going to just raise up my highlights. 
just to neutralize that a little bit, okay? And we just did that. So we didn't have to do too much, but it just brought some of that color back. We can do it a little bit more, but not too much because I still want to keep it that cold Chicago vibe that I'm going after. And this is looking really nice. I mean, before and after. So in my global adjustment node, what I want to do is really just bring my black points down a little bit, like they're a bit too high. So I'm just going to go in my log wheels and I'm going to pull this down. But obviously, I only want to affect the bottom part. I don't want to affect like his eyes in this area too much. So I'm going to control that with my low range. And just my focus right now is on his eyes. And I'm opening everything up. I'm just affecting his shirt and even just the darkest parts of his shirt. So if I do before and after, you see right here, black points are very important in your image, right? Because this is what creates this illusion of this crazy pop. And we're going to go into our sharpening. And that's where we're going to pull this guy down to add some sharpening. And that makes a huge difference because if I punch in and do before and hold it here for a second so you guys can notice what's happening and then do after, just look at the sharpening. It's like doing so much, and especially when you're working on something that's sports related, it goes a long way. And then this is where it's really going to sell the effect when we add our film grain. And you know how much I love my film grain, but it is so appropriate to do it here with a shot like this and just to grunge it up and just look at right here. And I'm going to give you guys some time to like really notice it. So let's remove it and just focus right here. And now I'm going to bring it back. Boom. And now if we just do a playback, let's watch this. Everything holds up. Like the key is holding up. Nothing is out of whack. Like everything is holding up. And just look how clean it looks. It's absolutely insane. One thing that I'm noticing right here around his shoulder this is where the key might be falling apart a little bit. I can see like right there and I know what to do to fix that. Okay, this is happening in this sat saturation node. So if I punch in right here, what I want to do is I'm going to take this and pull it back just a tiny bit, not a lot. Like literally 1.3. And now if I just come back, see, it fixed that problem. Boom, gone couple of things that I do want to mention before we check out the final look is if this is too distracting to you in the background, like if I play it through and if you watch this, one, there's no way to clean this up because it's genuinely the same color as the skin and that's usually pretty normal. And anytime you grab your skin and these things get selected, 90% of the times it's okay to just leave it be because it's going to benefit the entire image if you pop those colors out. But let's just say that if you only want to work on this and you don't want to affect these, or if you just want to find a happy medium, because like right now it might be a bit too pushed, we can do the same thing we did to our look node, how we blended it in. We can just go in here by selecting our skin node and then start pulling this back to like really dial it in to take the edge off. And now if I look at the background, if I do before and then if I do after like that, we took the edge off quite a bit. OK, now, obviously, you can go in and create tons of custom shapes and, you know, track it and get rid of it that way. But then if you're going from shot to shot, it's not really going to be feasible because you're going to end up spending so much time. And, you know, my style is always to give you guys something where it's more of a look DNA where you can apply it from like shot to shot to your entire scene. If you think about a pale skin in this environment, Chicago winter, the skin is still believable. Now, if we do want to push it a bit more, we obviously can. So what I can do is I can go in my gain and I can just start pushing it a little bit towards, you know, that warmth and bring that skin back. One last thing that I would change now is I feel like there's still some spillage that's happening in my keys. If I hit shift H and we look at it, here, some of the skin is still not selected around his eye. So in order to do that, I'm just going to take my luminance. I'm going to pull it back. You see this? And I'm going to pull it back up to this point. And now if I punch in and get rid of my highlights right here and look at it before, see this area right here? After, even in his hair, before, after, before and after. And now it's much more believable, okay? Now what I want to do is I just want to select all of this and let's go one by one and see where we started to where we ended up. All right, so this is our exposure, started with our exposure, then gave it some saturation. Then we selected soft light in our composite mode and sucked all the saturation out at first, grabbed our skin, and uh, 
give it some juice here by using our primaries wheel. And uh, then we moved on to our look adjustment where I use my editable splines to really pop the image quite a bit. And then in my vignette, I sent the information, inverted our skin, and then affected the background to create that wintry Chicago look. Then we moved on to our global adjustment where we created our black points to like really add an extra pop in our image. And finally, we added some sharpening and grain to finish it off. And let's check out the final look in full screen. I hope you guys picked up tons of cool tips and tricks. You know the rules how to submit the footage. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you guys think about this series. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Check out the link in the description below. Follow me on Instagram and I will see you in the next video.